Les, where do we go to get that energy we need and that fo to, to keep our focus and to keep our drive? Whenever you're moving from one level to the other and you have to reinvent yourself, the adjustment, it's very, very difficult, it's very, very challenging. And I think that you need to begin to remind yourself of your why. You know, Nietzsche said, if you know the why for living, if you know why you're doing something, it will empower you to endure anything that you're going through. When you're working in corporations, you're working in financial services, it's a very competitive area, it's very, very dynamic. It's, this is the era that Peter Drucker calls the era of the three C's, accelerated change, overwhelming complexity, and tremendous competition. And so people are tensed and, and very, very stressed out. So how do you deal with that? And, and knowing why you do what it is that you do. The name of the game right now is perceptual and psychological. It's the mental adjustments that we must make in the midst of the difficulties. That's what leaders do. Leaders don't panic. They are not intimidated by the change. They're not intimidated by the difficulties. What they are, they are empowered by it. I, I remember reading something that says, said, says, not what you don't have is what you think you need that keeps you from handling the difficulties and the challenges of life. That we have everything we need within us to face and to deal with whatever we have at, at, at hand because we are more powerful than anything that we're up against. Now, these mental adjustments and this, uh, this idea that I've got what I need, I mean, in some ways, that represents who I am. For many years, I was living a life that I was not designed to do. I'm designed to speak. That's what I do. But for 42 years, I'm 62 now, for 42 years, I was doing something I wasn't designed to do because when I looked at what I wanted to do, that was to speak, to train, to empower people, that my inner conversation to myself was, Les Brown, you can't do that. You were labeled educable mental retarded in the fifth grade. You have no college training. You were born in an abandoned building on a floor. You don't even know your birth parents. You can't do that. You are DT. You were called the dumb twin. Those words became my reality for many years. And then someone came along and interrupted that conversation in my head and said, Mr. Brown, they tell me you're about to drop out of school. And, and I said, um, well, yes, why, I, I, I just... I can't, I'm not smart like my brother. And I'll never forget when we first met, I was in his class waiting on another student. And he came in and said, young man, go to his board and work this problem out for me. I said, sir, I can't do that. I'm not one of your students. He said, it doesn't matter. Follow my directions anyhow. And I said, I can't, sir. And he said, why? I said, sir, because I'm educable, mentally retarded. He said, don't you ever say that again. Someone's opinion of you does not have to become your reality. So now this man changed how I saw myself. When I saw myself as the dumb twin, and that was the conversation in my head. That was given to me. That's what I believed. I accepted that. So the things that I was up against academically, they began to appear not as difficult as I thought they were because now he empowered me. Before then, right before then, up to that point, the things that were placed before me, I would stumble, I would slow the class down because I was convinced that I was dumb. I believed what they said to me. And this guy came along and he changed my perception of myself. Someone said that people don't live life as it is. They live life as they are. And so what we have to do as leaders, I don't care where you are in customer service, managing people, that you have to do during the tough times, you have to bring the best out of yourself. A sign so, that I saw the other day that said, if you're going through hell, don't stop. <laughs> Keep moving. You know, you've got to continue to move. And if you continue Continue to move and make the adjustments and fine tune your strategy and, and let the people on the organization know, hey, look here, we're going to make this happen. And here's what they have to do. They have to come from a place of it's possible. And once people begin to know that it's possible, then they begin to work within that framework. Sometimes we have to be intelligently ignorant. Many people fail to achieve the goals that they're capable of doing because they judge according to appearances, they know too much, and they think themselves out of it. What we have to do in this point in time, in this period of our history, is begin to be open to the possibility that it's possible, that we can do this. And the next step is that it's necessary. It's necessary that we find a way to make this work, that we look for ways to optimize the efficiency of our operation. It's necessary that everybody gets on the same page. It's necessary that we develop one vision, one voice, and higher standards on how we're going to begin to drive the culture to impact our bottom line, to begin to take the level of customer service that we envision to another level to dominate the marketplace. It's necessary.